Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of How Not to Write a Novel. Today I've done reasonably well. I've done a little, actually I've done quite a lot of thinking about the different characters in this story and how they interact with each other. I've started actually typing up uh, fuller descriptions of the characters, uh, the background and their abilities so that I don't get confused and have two characters with the same abilities later on. I did notice that while I was recording yesterday's video, uh, I did start talking about one character and then drift on to another. Uh, I was getting them a little confused, so what I was saying didn't match up with the notes on my screen. So hopefully that won't happen again. And then in the last hour, I've written some more of the story. It's only about another 600 words, but I think it gets me to the end of this second scene. Um, if you remember, the last time I mentioned I was writing about a Mr. Walker who didn't seem like such a nice guy. Um, he's too willing to let people get hurt just outside his house and not even bother to call the police. Now I've continued the story. Um, he's received a set of documents from this guy Jones, who at this point we know very little about. Um, he's decided to leave investigating it further until tomorrow. He's emailed Jones with something that um, might encourage him to meet. He's not yet decided if he's actually going to help Jones. And he's decided that he's going to read the rest of Jones's documents tomorrow to find out if there's anything that's useful to him in his business. Then, just as he's about to start reading his book again, there's a knock at the door. The man on the other side of the door was as short as Walker, with a bearing and manner that made it natural to look up to him despite his stature. He was wearing a respectable suit which gave the impression his tailor was at least competent, if not a household name. He had close cropped red hair long enough to hint at a tendency to curls, and a goatee beard that could have been freshly trimmed. He peered at Walker over the top of a pair of dark glasses, then folded them carefully to stow in his breast pocket. Good evening. I hope I'm not disturbing you at this late hour. My name is Solomon. I wonder, is there somewhere we might talk in private? Just Solomon. No first name. I know of your reputation. You work for Constantine, yes? Yes, I do often work with Mr Constantine. However, it is the dragon's business that brings me to your door tonight. And you would not believe how uncommon it is to find someone expecting me. I wouldn't say expecting, but I know of your work. Please, come inside. Have you travelled far? I can at least offer you a brandy after your journey. Solomon smiled, nodded, and hung his coat carefully on the hook beside the door. Twenty minutes passed, while the disturbance in the street drew steadily closer. Then the door opened again, to reveal Solomon leaving with a sheaf of papers tucked neatly under one arm. He left the front door ajar. He was confident that the intoxicated youth currently roaming the streets would see it as a sign of welcome and would relieve the house of its more valuable contents long before anyone thought to call the police. No evidence would remain untouched by the time Lance Walker was discovered hanging in his library. I think that's a good way to end the chapter. I was actually going to have more showing the interaction between Lance and Solomon. But by the time I'd gone into Walker's business dealings, it felt like this chapter was getting a little longer than a single scene. And I wasn't sure what I could add that wouldn't just be drawing it out for no reason. So I think putting the conclusion into a single paragraph. Um, I know they say show, don't tell. But at this point, what we're really showing the reader is... Solomon's attitude. He's presumably killed Walker and he's comfortable enough with this that I've got my hands in 
camera. Um, hope that's not too distracting. But um, yeah, Solomon is comfortable enough with killing someone that he automatically thinks of leaving the front door open so the house will hopefully re be robbed before anyone discovers the body, thus confusing any evidence. In the circumstances, it's likely that if somebody walks into the house, nicks something valuable and runs off with it b before going upstairs to discover the body, the police would assume that whoever stole the stuff also killed Walker. So this is a case that um, the police probably won't be able to solve, but this being a urban fantasy novel, a team of vampire hunters will probably find themselves involved in it. Now at this point, there's no way for the reader to know for sure what's going on. But um, my plan at this point is that Solomon is one of a number of people in a business which serves the unnaturals. For example, providing those who live more than 100 years with new false IDs. Um, this is quite a large business and the people involved don't like to keep records of their clients. So the people involved in this business basically know each other by reputation. It's a kind of, um, I'm not sure the right word. They're people who put a lot of value in trust. Solomon has worked in the past for Constantine, who is another member of the same group. Therefore, Walker assumes that it's something like he's carrying a message. He's come to tell him about something that Constantine doesn't trust. Um, he doesn't trust phone lines not to be tapped or something, so he sent somebody in person. Solomon says, no, it's um, the dragon sent me this time. Um, Walker knows who the who he means by the dragon. Um, I'm not sure if I should change that to a more normal name. But in this case, Walker thinks, OK, one of my allies. However, at this point, Solomon doesn't know who Walker is. What he's actually done is followed the courier who brought Jones's file. So when Walker knows his name, he's assumed that he's read that in the file. Solomon knows what's in the file vaguely, and Manivello has given him the orders to basically destroy the file, destroy all copies of it, and kill everybody who's seen it. So this is, to a great extent, a mistake because he didn't need to kill Walker. But Solomon is the kind of guy who does exactly what he's been paid to do. Does that make sense? Of course, it still might change as I get around to writing more bits. You know, the pieces of the plot might seem to lead towards something else, so I'll change the plan later. But that's what I've got in my head right now. If you've got any suggestions for things that I can do with that, then leave a note in the comments, which are down there. Um, if you want to read the document, I will provide a link in the description. Uh, if you want to see the previous video, then there should be a link up there. And if you want to see the next video, then a link should appear up there as soon as it's made. And there might also be a link somewhere around here where um, you can subscribe to my channel to get notified when I make a new video. But um, until then, uh, see you around.